Howdy folks, it's Adriel the Hunt Gear Guy, and this is the Freedom Ordnance FX9. It's a PCC, pistol caliber carbine, uh, which means it takes 9mm, Glock mags, that kind of a thing, semi-automatic. And uh, this is the Canadian Specific Edition, and the Canadian Specific Edition has a longer barrel than normal. So this is an 18 and a half inch barrel. Uh, in the US, these are available in 16 inch barreled versions and then some like real short ones as well. Uh, and I think in Canada, you can now get the short versions, but those will be restricted if you care. Um, you Restricted firearms in Canada, you can take to the range and back. Non-restricted, you can, I don't know, take them hunting or go for shooting or, out to a gravel pit or something like that. So um, this is one of the most ergonomic PCCs you can get. This is the best go fast PCC you can get. A um, couple caveats to that, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, as you can see, my magazine is empty. I've got a chamber flag in the chamber, so there can't be any ammo in there. And if you want to see, there, it's empty. So this gun's clear and we can take a closer look at it. So the FX9's claim to fame in Canada here is usability. Uh, our AR-15 uh, model uh, 9mm PCCs are all prohib. Um, this one's not. This one's still non-restricted as long as you get it with the 18 and a half inch barrel. And it's got a couple of things that are really interesting. One, that magazine release is nice and tight. It's close up and it drops free. So as you're uh, shooting your course of fire in, in your uh, uh, three gun match or whatnot, you can drop the mag and go grab a fresh one off your belt at the same time. So that's going to be a little bit faster. Now, uh, Adding to the speed, there's a bolt hold open. So that's gonna lock open uh, when your magazine is finished. So you've dropped your magazine, you're going to grab another one, you pop that other magazine in, and the magwell is okay. It's got a little bit of a bevel to it, so you can't like really get it off center, but a little bit is fine. And then it's got a bolt hold open. So you pop that new mag in, hit the bolt hold open, and get rolling again, which is very similar to how an AR uh, ergonomics works. So uh, it's very quick, it's good for competition, and uh, and I think that that's one of the big claims to fame on this thing. The fact that it's got like a charging handle up here is cute, but um, I I would rather it just had a side charging handle or something a little bit, maybe a, a bit bigger of a charging handle here because this is uh, quite small and it's got, you know, stuff in the way and I, I would I would just assume it had like a little bit of a larger charging handle on here. Apparently they do sell a, a, an enlarged charging handle. I think it should come with one from the factory um, because the rest of it is uh, is quite good in terms of ergonomics. And then we get to parts compatibility with this rifle and parts compatibility is fantastic. It uses many of the standard AR parts. Now the reason why that's attractive is that the AR is a standard rifle, I guess, in the US. It's, it's almost like a platform. So a lot of the parts, anytime you can reuse those parts, you're going to give yourself access to a bunch of aftermarket parts. So the forend, you replace that, the stock, the buffer tube, I guess if you wanted to, who cares though, the stock. Uh, the grip, you can't use like a beaver tail grip. It would look weird. It would just kind of sit out in space. I guess you could. I guess you could if you really wanted to. Or you can just get a regular grip and, and pop that on there. Um, there's a bunch of parts on here that are AR compatible. Now the receiver is not AR compatible and that's important especially here in Canada uh, because if it was AR compatible we couldn't have it. Um, but since it's not AR compatible it's actually a little bit more compact than an AR and it, you can't fit an AR, AR upper or lower on this gun. It, it won't fit. Um, it actually makes it more compact and importantly not restricted <laughs> as long as you again run with the 18 and a half inch barrel version. Um, a couple of like running nine millimeter out of an 18 and a half inch barrel. Whew, so quiet, so quiet, so nice. <laughs> it's actually a very nice uh, style to run. You could put a brake on here. There's not really a lot of gas pressure hitting uh, at the end of this barrel though. So that brake's not gonna do a heck of a lot, but I guess you could put one on there anyways, if you really wanted to. Uh, recoil on this thing, not bad, not bad at all. So not much to worry about there. Um, optics mounting. It's a big flat rail, so it works with everything that an AR would would uh, uh, take, which is good because again, there's a lot of compatibility out there. So this uh, sp uh, Spark AR, yeah, that's what this is, um, fits on there and runs just fine. It's great. We could uh, uh, run the uh, iron sights if we wanted to uh, uh, run some backups on here. Also uh, easy enough to do. 
we could change the trigger, but if we change the trigger, uh, we'll run into some issues. So uh, this thing's got a big heavy bolt that's moving back and forth. It's all overall like quite a light gun. And one thing that you will see that uh, some people have had issues with is uh, uh, just uh, uh, doubling off of your shoulder. So if you're not holding onto it tight, uh, and you just kind of hold it loose, it may give you some extra shots just from your finger hitting it as, as it's going back and forth on your shoulder. Um, which is usually not what you want, like uh, even just like joking around. Um, that kind of like bump firing is um, fun, but not great. Like if you're in a match or something like that, not great. Not great at all. So keep in mind that that if you change the trigger on here, the from the factory, they come with a heavy trigger. I guess that's a good thing. You're not going to get doubles or triples or a full mag if you um, hold it loosely on your shoulder and, and fire. And again, in a competition, that's probably a good thing. All right, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know I go through pros and cons, so let's talk about some cons. Uh, one of them is ammo pickiness. Boy, this thing's picky on ammo. Oh, oh, so picky. I tried a lot of different kinds of ammo through it. Uh, the only one it really liked was 124 grain, round nose, brass case. That's it. Any other combo, I got jams. And even with that combo, I'm not super confident. I could even go, say, like 100 or 200 rounds without getting a jam with it. It just jammed a lot. Uh, one of the reasons for that is because this is a Gen 1 uh, FX9, so it's an earlier generation. Um, there is a change that they did to the bolt face. I'll roll in a clip showing what I did. Um, you relieve it a little bit, it improves the ejection. So that was one, that was one issue. I wanted to uh, uh, match with this thing, and it was just Jam City. Jam City, Jam City. So, so many jams. Um, so I, I made that modification to the bolt, uh, which you don't have to, if you've got a new one of these, all the new bolts come already pre-relieved. So, uh, it only affected like early, uh, uh, versions of these things that helped, that helped a lot. Now I could make it through, you know, one or two mags without getting a gem, depending on ammo, depending on ammo, anything flat nose, nah, not going to work. Hollow point, nah, nah, not going to work either. So you really do need a round nose 115 or 124 grain uh, bullet to uh, to feed properly in this thing. Uh, and then the other issue I ran across was I still get the odd fail to eject. And a fail to eject is uh, the bolt comes back. It doesn't flip the empty case out. It tries to ram it back into the chamber along with a round fresh from the magazine. So you get these two rounds trying to go in and I'll show you some footage here of what that looks like. And that's bad to do on the clock. On the clock, what you have to do is drop the magazine, uh, rack your stuff out of there, sometimes pick it out with your fingers, uh, put your new mag in, charge it back up again, and then go. Not very fast. Not very fast when that happens on the clock. So uh, that was one issue. Um, the others, so on, more on ammo pickiness, uh, they say not to run aluminum case stuff in here. Uh, and I think the reason is because the bolt and buffer... Um, aren't heavy as a lot of blowback nine millimeters. Uh, so if you think about like a lot of blowback nine millimeters out there, they use uh, a, quite a heavy bolt on them to uh, to do the blowback thing. Uh, this one uses a, a light bolt and buffer combo, and I'll show you a picture of that now. So what that means is that this is going to come back pretty quick, and uh, if you're if it comes back too quick, it's going to stretch that case out, and I think that's what it's doing. And what happens when uh, you do that with aluminum, and they say not to use aluminum with this gun. I did anyways, and uh, this happens. It rips the uh, the front of the case off, leaves that behind in your chamber. Uh, you load up another round, and then the next round goes like this, has a little kaboom. And uh, the reason for that is because this rifle will allow out of battery detonations. This is not a, like, this is in my opinion, a design flaw. You shouldn't allow a rifle to go off when it's not in battery. But the thing is, is that in battery? Is this in battery? Like it will, it will allow the uh, hammer to hit the firing pin even when it's like that, when it's not in battery. And, uh, and this is the result. That's what'll happen is your round will uh, pop off. It'll spray all the other junk out the side. It'll pop your bullet a little bit into the rifling, so you'll need a, a rod to, to kick it out, uh, and your day will be ruined. Now, 
you could blame that on me and yeah, blame it on me. Shit, they said not to shoot aluminum case ammo and I did and uh, you know, I got a case case head failure and not case head, case failure and uh, and then out of battery. But my buddy Trevor from Slamfire Radio had the same thing happen with brass cased ammo. His brass cased ammo also failed in the same way by ripping out uh, a piece of it and leaving it behind. And then the next round you get it out of battery. Uh, so what does that mean? I think this thing's cranking the bolt back too fast. At least the, this version uh, is. And that's what's causing those uh, those case failures. It's, it's, leave, it, it's still under pressure. Um, this barrel's quite long, so all the pressure's going back on the bolt there, and it's, it's ripping cases. I think the bolt needs to be heavier, or maybe the buffer needs to be heavier. Something to slow the bolt down, just keep it forward a little bit, uh, longer, so that the, the, it gives the, uh, the, the case a chance for the pressure to be relieved, and the lower pressure, and then finally start, uh, racking it back. Because if it starts ripping it out too soon, again, you rip the case in half, and, uh, and that's no good. So where does that leave us? Um, I think what that where that leaves us is you should only run factory 124 or 115 grain brass case ammo out of this thing. Um, it's going to stretch it, and I would not run anything too hot because it's going to rip your cases in half. So just factory stuff, just stuff that's going to be uh, uh, useful on this kind of a thing. Uh, and don't get too experimental with the ammo that's going in it. Um, also, always wear your safety squints. And <laughs> and uh, I would not want to put... I probably wouldn't want to shoot this thing as a left-handed uh, person and have my face anywhere close to this port because uh, that's where your bad stuff's going to fly out is uh, is right out, uh, right out there. Um, so you wouldn't want to have your face or hand or anything uh, uh, near there. And uh, yeah, that's, that's not really great. Uh, the rest of the rifle is fantastic. I think that the uh, uh, the compactness of it, the ergonomics and controls are all really good. Uh, I just wish that um, some of these reliability and safety things were, were fixed on it. Um, potentially on that bolt, shielding it a little bit more from the firing pin uh, so that it would only allow access to that firing pin when it's absolutely in battery. Uh, I think that that would uh, go a long way to improving some of the safety on this thing. And, uh, uh, I mean, the rest of it, I, I really like the rifle. I really like the design of it. Um, and this should be like the primo, uh, nine millimeter PCC in Canada. I think with these issues fixed, it would be. Thanks for watching.